for years now, Donald Trump has insisted his favorite book is the Bible. But for years now, he has also been seemingly unable or at least unwilling to recall any of its specifics. The whole Bible is an incredible, I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no I, verse I, that means I a lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Is there a favorite Bible verse or Bible story that has informed your thinking or your character through life, sir? Well, I think many. I mean, you know, when we get into the Bible, I think many, so many. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. You might think that an aide would slip him a sheet of paper with something like, I don't know, John 3.16 on it, so Trump could at least pretend to know something about the Bible. But no. And that reality is part of what makes Trump's latest grift so amazing. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible we must make America pray again. I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. Now, Donald Trump hawking Bibles while actually never having opened one himself is ironic, but it is also not out of character. I mean, this is the man who's selling basketball shoes right now, and I'm not even sure his three-pointer exists. The reason Trump is Bible peddling and the reason it is interesting isn't because of the hypocrisy. The reason Trump and his Bible sales are interesting is because of the fine print here. This is the frequently asked questions page for this new Trump Bible. If you were wondering, this is the only Bible endorsed by Donald Trump, which may be alarming news. I don't know. But the thing that actually matters here is the very last question on this list. Is any of the money from this Bible going to the Donald J. Trump campaign for president? The answer is no. Despite the fact that Trump's ad for this Bible really feels like a political ad to make America pray again, etc. Despite that, money from the sale of these Bibles does not go to any political cause. It goes to a politician. It goes to Donald Trump. According to the New York Times, Trump gets royalties from Bible purchases, which is part of a licensing deal through a shell company. So the money is split between this Bible company and Donald Trump. At the end of the day, this is really just Trump getting his supporters to enrich him personally. And the reason I point this out isn't because I care particularly about Donald Trump making money off a bunch of Bibles. It's because this little shell game here is very much part of a pattern. And we are seeing it repeat itself in a big way that could impact the 2024 election. You probably remember that back in 2020, after losing the race, Trump launched what he called his official election defense fund. Between Election Day and January 6th, the Trump campaign sent millions of fundraising emails to supporters, sometimes as many as 25 emails a day. The fundraising pitch was that the Democrats want to steal the election and that this fund needed your money to fight back. Trump managed to raise $250 million with that sales pitch, but there was just one small problem with Trump's official election defense fund. It didn't exist. I don't believe there is actually a fund called the election defense fund. Now, Trump really did raise $250 million, but only a small fraction actually went towards anything resembling fighting back or challenging the 2020 election. If you read the fine print while donating to Trump's official election defense fund, you would learn that before a single penny is given to Trump's efforts to fight the election results, the first $5,000 donated by any donor is split between the RNC and Trump's Save America PAC. In other words, if you sent in $200, 
none of that would go towards the Trump defense fund. Now, today, the New York Times is out with a very useful piece showing where all that money did go. And it turns out that all of that $254 million windfall Trump got from claiming the election was stolen, it turns out Trump funneled that money through a series of different accounts like his Save America PAC. The money was part of a little shell game that ultimately paid Donald Trump's personal legal expenses. He used it to fill the $90,000 a day hole in his pocket from the legal bills he has been incurring in his various civil and criminal cases. The other big showstopper in this piece today is that that big pot of money, it is nearly gone. And now with those coffers nearly run dry, Trump is looking for another cash cow. Next month, Trump is set to hold a big ticket fundraising dinner with the RNC in Palm Beach, Florida. And the fine print on the invites to that din dinner, well, that fine print is telling. This is the first major fundraiser since Trump got his daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, installed as the co-chair of the RNC. And Laura Trump has since very publicly made clear that the RNC will not be paying any of Trump's personal legal bills. But again, look at the fine print. At this fundraiser next month, the invitation shows that the first $6,600 donated go straight to Trump's campaign. And the next $5,000 donated after that go to Trump's Save America PAC, the entity that has been paying his legal bills. So in order to actually get money to the RNC at this RNC fundraiser, you first have to clear $11,600 in Trump's own piggy banks. So, OK, the RNC isn't paying Trump's legal fees, but it is not as simple as that. It is a shell game. Christy, how is this legal? How, how <laughs> can you how can he keep saying this one thing and doing another? Well, I think the big question here will be looking behind all of this as to who's coordinating it. Mm. If Donald Trump is coordinating between his campaign and these PACs that are supposed to be third parties and independent, the Save America PAC is an independent, even though he directs it, independent third party, if there is sufficient coordination and you could prove that, then maybe you would have something to say. These expenditures are not purely personal. These are really campaign contributions. And therefore, they should be subject to the limits of $5,000 that campaign contributions are subject to. So uh, again, you, it seems to me, like you said, they're just trying to do an end run around yes. these various regulations. And it seems so transparent. The question is, will anybody look into this? Will the FEC look into this? Will will any, uh, you know, will any prosecutors look into this? It's, it's unclear. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.